Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Food for Thought for Wednesday, March the 3rd, 2021. My name is Pastor Clint Lang with Hillside Community Church in 100 Mile House, BC, Canada. I'm so glad that you could join me for the morning devotion. Now, we've been going through the parables of Jesus, and today we're going to be talking about the parable of the faithful servant. Um, that, that parable is found in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, but today we're going to be looking at this passage in Mark chapter 13, verses 32 to 37. So this is what Jesus said. About that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each one with their assigned task, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening, or at midnight, or when the rooster crows, or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. So in this parable, um, Jesus had just finished telling his disciples the parable of the budding trees, which we covered two Food for Thoughts ago. In that parable, um, Jesus spoke of the destruction, the signs of the destruction of the Jewish temple in AD 70 in context preceding the parable, and also the second coming of Jesus, his second coming. Now, the signs that the second coming of Christ would be at hand uh, were told by Jesus. And he said, just like a budding tree, um, the signs will proceed the event. So for eighty seventy, he gave some examples of signs that would accompany uh, the lead up to the destruction of the temple. And then he went on to describe signs that uh, that his coming would be uh, at hand. So right after the parable of the budding trees is this particular parable, where the signs let us know that the season is approaching when Jesus was, will return. However, Jesus clarifies this further in the parable that we're, we just read. So even though we, can t- we can't tell um, exactly when things are going to happen, we can tell the season is uh, at a certain place by looking at the signs of the times. So when Jesus was ministering to his disciples on the earth, he told them that he himself as he was speaking, did not know the hour or the day of his return. Now, he made it very plain that the Father God alone knew the day or the hour that he would return. This is perplexing, and the question is asked, well, if Jesus is God, and we know that the scriptures tell us that he is God in multiple places, and God in his character and his person, is all-knowing, should not the Lord Jesus Christ have known when he was coming? Why then would he say that he didn't know, only the Father in heaven knew? Well, the answer to this question is not found in the deity of Christ, but in the humanity of Christ. Now, while Jesus is fully God, he also became fully man. And this is what we call the hypostatic union of Christ. The divine nature and human nature combined together in Jesus as one. Now Jesus is eternally God, and Jesus became a man. When he came to earth as a man, he voluntarily, and this is really important for us to understand, he voluntarily restricted the use of certain divine attributes. For instance, in Philippians chapter 2, 6 and 7, um, the Bible tells us concerning Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing, taking on the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness. So, this being the case, we see, as written in John 4, 34, John 5.30, 
John 6.38, that Jesus did not manifest his divine attributes unless he was directed to do so by the Father. When Jesus walked on the earth, he did nothing outside of what the Father commanded. He demonstrated his omniscience, meaning his all-knowing uh, attributes, on several occasions, for instance, in John chapter five, uh, 2, verse 22, 25, Sorry, 2, verse 25, and also in John 3, 13. So if you look at those scriptures, you'll see that he demonstrated his omniscience, but he voluntarily restricted that omniscience to only those things that the Father wanted him to know during the days of his humanity. John 15, 15 speaks of this. Such was the case regarding the knowledge of the date of the time of his return. When Jesus was in the flesh, he lived in complete submission to the Father as an example and a sacrifice for humanity. And there's many scriptures which uh, demonstrate this um, in John, verses such as John 5:30, 6:38, 8:28 to 29, 10:30. 1249, 1428, and 31. Multiple scriptures. And also Matthew 26, 39. Now, if you're going to look up all those scriptures, it's going to take you a little while. But they're worth looking at because it does state exactly what I'm telling you here. See, Jesus' submission to the Father as well as to the oneness in, in Godhead is established through scriptures. Um, yes, um, Jesus is God. Um, but some things Jesus had apparently chosen to give up rights to during his earthly ministry, as seen in Philippians chapter 2, um, include his willingness to s submit himself only to speak what the Father told him. Now, this is somewhat confusing, but um, Jesus now exalted in heaven, surely knows all, including the timing of his second coming. He just chose to set that divine attribute aside while in his earthly body on the earth, according to uh, Philippians chapter 2 and these other scriptures that I've given you. And being like the Bereans, if you have question on this, I would challenge you to look up those scriptures that I've given you to today because um, nothing that I should say here uh, should go without being tested. So I invite that. And uh, prayerfully, it'll help you to understand the hypostatic union and how that worked. Well, in conclusion, when you see Jesus speaking um, the words of Mark 13:32 in this parable to his disciples, even he had no knowledge of the date and time of his return. But after he was resurrected, Jesus returned to his full divine knowledge. In our humanity as well, we do not know when Jesus will come again. Uh, angels don't know. We don't know. The second coming of Jesus Christ will occur when people least expect that it will. Um, and as such, we are called to live in such a way as he, Jesus could come any time. Uh, this is the state of living that uh, we are called to, to live by, regardless of whether we were a believer in the first century or now. Uh, the Lord will come suddenly and unexpectedly. And since, since this is the case, we should live out our, our faith like he could come at any moment. And... Uh, this is a fact. We know that Jesus is coming soon. He's coming soon because the signs of the times are showing us that the season is well advanced. We don't know the day nor the hour. We don't know exactly how it's going to unfold, but the Lord knows, and we need to be ready, and we need to be living in obedience to Christ in anticipation of his return. And as the scripture says here in this parable, 
Lest we be found to be fallen asleep, we should be alert and prepared for the coming of the owner of everything, the Lord Jesus Christ. Could be morning, could be evening, could be night. This is Food for Thought. Have a good day.